Okay, um, so first of all, hi to all of you. Um, as Ricard said, I'm a PhD candidate in the Demos Research Group, and I'm working into projects in the PLUS project and also in the Sharing Cities Action project. Um, so well, I'm going to present you my master thesis, well, a part of my master thesis, which consisted on a business model analysis of global delivery. Um, I analyzed the, the, the implications of, of following an estimation and a strategy of cost lowering um, formulas in, in social terms. And afterwards, I, I went further from this. So I, I linked it to the neoliberal context, to the socioeconomical context that we are facing today, and also about the future of work and its safety net models. And this is what I'm going to present you today. It's exactly, um, I'm going to offer you a way of analyzing universal basic income in, from the perspective side of the workers. So basically, um, why we have to talk about universal basic income in the platform economy, we, s we saw it yesterday. Um, the platform economy gathers the key opportunities and challenges of the future of work, but also we have like major trends that are like um, putting us towards rethinking or social protection models. Basically, inequality is increasing, the labor p patterns are, are changing, it's more unstable, it's more precarious also, and we see that conventional employment is decreasing well, at the same time, we see that um, production is still, it, it increases, but it's not distributed to everyone, the benefits of it. So, here in Europe, we, f we see that um, traditional social protections are still attached to traditional employment, and universal basic income offers us the opportunity of detaching this from, from the, the, the feeling of being an, an employee or being recognized as an employee and start thinking about the, just having the right of having a protection because being a, a, a citizen or a resident or because being a human. Um, why we have to think about unconditional policies? Basically because conditional policies fail to, to answer the, to, to respond to the problem, at least partially. They stigmatize its potential recipients, they create poverty traps, and also they imply a high bureaucratic burden. But um, when we talk about universal basic income, and especially when we talk about universal basic income in the platform economy, no one talks about the different schemes that we can find with universal basic income and the different impacts that each, um, each of these schemes has. That's why I decided to develop um, an analytical model to help us think about the, the different types that we can promote. Um, this model is based, uh, based on two previous, be, previously developed models, which is the Hitcherman's triangle. Hitcherman basically explained that when there is a conflict social relationship, so when one of the parts is not satisfied, there are three options that can happen, or a combination of them. Basically, you can, let, you can raise your voice and try to change the relationship, or you can exit. You can, you can try to find another solution, another, another job opportunity. And in these two, two, two options, loyalty um, in the sense of, of um, cultural beliefs, in, in, the, in the sense of things that make you prevent from taking this, this from raising your voice or from taking other options, um, apply. So, for example, thinking that you uh, have to work 40, 40, 40 hours per week, that you have to deliver a thousand, a thousand deliveries, and if you don't do it, you are not enough productive, and you don't fulfill with the requirements of society, this affects you from, from raising your voice. And I combine this with the Wilnaman and Wispelar models, which basically try to differentiate the different exit options. So they, they explain that there, there can be an option of an incomplete exit, which is, I raise my voice, um, and I get, and, and I get the, the opportunity, for example, to leave temporarily the labor market, but then I come back. I get better conditions, I get a raising, a raising salaries, um, and stronger exits, which will call for those, those options when you go to, to work for another company, you move from, from a bet, to a better sector, better paid, um, you have more flexible uh, working arrangements. And the radical exit, which we'll call when you, for those options when you break completely with the hegemonic model. Um, so you start, for example, uh, working for a cooperative, you, you found a cooperative, you start being an entrepreneur, you dedicate time for caring, act caring activities, you take care of your children, etc. Um, what is important to take into account here is that voice and exit options are positively correlated. It, what does it mean? That in, in, 
even if I don't take the exit option, even if I don't go to, to start an entrepreneurial activity, even if I don't go to take care of my children, the fact of being able to say that I am able to do this increases my options of getting better job conditions. So, um, my, my model basically says, okay, um, there are two options, but there is a conflict social relationships. It can happen that the, the person tries to change, the IGN tries to change it or not. And this will depend on, on endogenous variables and on, on material and immaterial variables that, that, that affect the agent. For example, it can affect the fact that you are a woman and you, you, you normally are destined to care activities. It, but it can also affect, um, for example, the fact that you have certain education, the fact of, of having an alternative job offer, etc. And this will affect also the rest of outcomes in the, in the flowchart. For example, taking a, I don't consider the difference between the other models and, and my model is that I don't consider the incomplete exit as an exit. I consider that it's, you're still in the hegemonic model, so you're not, you're not getting a change. You are still dependent on the employer, so you, you are not really um, changing your situation. Um, and the other one, I, I, so basically, I, uh, differences between those that aim at changing the model and make make a change in, in the in the hegemonic model and those that don't. Um, in my work, I apply this model to the case of platform careers, but I think that here it's more interesting to, to link it broadly to the platform economy and also to precarious workers because it's not just related to the platform economy. Um, will more people go for the try option with a universal basic income? Well, this depends on the endogenous variables, so what we consider as, an, as a universal basic income, basically the main definition of, of, of universal basic income, what is basic, what is universal, um, and how much income do, are we going to do it, no? how, how much income are we going to deliver to them, and also um, what policies are going to go with hand in hand with, with universal basic income. Is it, is, is it going to subs a substitute of the welfare state, or is it not going to be? Um, and also, exogenous variables to universal basic income, right? like, as I said, the policies, the gender, etc. Um, here, it's important to, to, to clarify that there are different types of precarious workers, and each precarious worker faces different risks and faces different kinds of low remuneration, so this will have different impacts in, in each worker. Um, and we have to take into account, even in the case of careers, there are different types of platform careers. Not all of them face the same level of precariousness. What's, what is the first option? The first option is not, not trying it or stop raising their voice. Um, this will happen when this, they feel that they have no real options of getting better options. And this seems like too logical, and, but it's, it's important to, to talk about it because um, when it's more probably that this happens? It is more probably when people are not accompanied but by an emancipatory basic income, which means that, in, that they cannot threaten with a credible exit option. So this, in the case, for example, of being a high, scale, high remunerated employee, you normally are well fitted in the labor market, so you can find for alternative, labor, for altern for alternative job options. But in the case of a platform career, um, maybe you don't have that many options. So um, this, this could make that if we introduce a universal basic income of really a low amount, we can make that um, the, the highest, the, 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 the less precarious workers or those that are like have better labor job conditions, like in the sense that they can get better options or they can find an alternative, um, they, there's the, 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 op the option that they get better conditions, but at the expense of the other ones. Why? Because let's imagine, and I have research behind this, um, that a platform career um, gets uh, 2,000 euros per month um, as a universal basic income. Okay, what's the main feeling? It's thanks, I'm going to cover basically the taxes in order to continue with my activity as a platform career. And this is perfect for, 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 for profit companies since we are helping them to, to continue with their business model. But this, we have to take into account that will contribute to the precarization of the economy. Um, so what do we have to do? Or we could think about it. It's offering um, 
to, to the maximum amount of workers as possible the option of, of having a threat, a credible threat. To, to, uh, and this will happen first when they have an alternative, an alternative job offer in the first case. So when, but this, as we know, it, it will not happen for all the workers. Or there is also the option that they can, they can threaten by take, to take the, the radical exit option and break with the model. Um, and this, happen, this will happen when they have enough for living. So when they have a, a highly universal basic income regime or they have a high, high payment, sorry, um, and this comes with also with complementary policies and education and also regulation also. Um, in this case, when they, are, they, they make it to, to threaten the employee and the employer um, credibly, the, the contracted the, the employer will have to make a cost-benefit analysis. In this case, it can be the case that they find correctly they find, they find profitable to increase the, the working condition of the workers, but it, it can also be the other way around, and they, they think, okay, let's automate the process. Let's use robots. Um, in this case, universal basic income could be um, criticized by catalyzing um, this, the, the, this process, no, by, 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 by being a catalyst um, in this maybe un unavoidable process. Um, so what's imp th that this is why I'm defending that it's really important to differentiate between basic income schemes and with, because we have to differentiate if it's really it's acting as a financial backstop for workers or if it's not. If, if we are really um, empowering them in the sense of, of, of offering them an alternative even for those that don't have it in the job market or not. Um, so yeah, basically these are like my preliminary conclusions that um, that the potential of universal basic income depends on endogenous and exogenous variables. That's also providing economic independence. That's not mean ensuring equality. It will affect differently. So we can provide the same amount of income, but this is, will not have um, the same influx for, every, for, for everyone. And uh, I, I, I invite you to, to think about what, why do we want to think as a, understand as innovation. It's always competing through a cost-lowering formula and, in, and innovation. If we are avoiding imp, imp, employee um, rights, are we really innovating? And also, like, what does it mean flexibility? Who is, for who is this flexibility really? And well, and I also like, um, I think that we, we should think about the, the impacts of universal basic income in other vulnerable groups and test pilot schemes. So that's all. Thank you.